God my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side, your trusty shepherd's croak makes me feel secure. You serve me a six course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. A soft place, a soft place to fall. Apostle Derek Zachary was so informative and so transparent in a lot of the conversations, as you saw in the previous segment. But it got so hot and heavy that I almost had to shed my ears up because, you know, I'm kind of new to all of this. But season three was so, in, the premiere was so incredible as we talked more and more about relationships. I know you enjoyed what you saw already. Here's the conclusion of what we found out about relationships as we shot the premiere of season three of A Soft Place to Fall in Atlanta, Georgia. I should have ended that last session with To Be Continued but I'll probably end up doing that every time we do this <laughs> to be continued. But uh, it was so powerful and so dynamic, our conversations on relationships, that we had to come back and kind of, we'll never finish it, but uh, we pick up where we left off uh, and talk about some other things that uh, have been discussed as far as relationships. And one of them uh, was um, a situation that a friend of uh, our wonderful production crew uh, talked about a relationship that they had gotten involved in, and it kind of what what kind of resonated with me was that there comes times in certain people's lives. I'm not one of them that they just have to have somebody. And this particular person found themselves in a relationship that, with someone who had been married several times, and a lot of things were not good, of course. So. Um, what does one do before diving into a situation that could end up like that? So, um, the first, if you're going to get married to somebody, you need to go through counseling. Mm -hmm. Counseling will dissect some situations out if you go to the right counselor. Mm -hmm. Because there are some folks that we friends with certain folks and they're going to say what we want to say and, and we move on. You need to have somebody that's going to give you the real good questions to make you think, like myself, uh, we'll get in your business. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to go straight to the, to the meat and potatoes of it. And then, you know, that part of there are a lot of times we don't discern stuff before stuff happens, it's because we don't spend time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get, we ask God to send us somebody, he sends us somebody, and then we stop praying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then so we don't no longer consult him about the situation. Even though flashlights are going off, signal lights, stop signs, mm -hmm. all of this stuff is going off, we bypass it because they in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, when I was about to get married, um, I I was praying. First of all, she wasn't she she ain't had a Holy Ghost, so I was like, Jesus, we got a whole problem. Um, we went on a fast together, and I my specific prayer was, Father, I need her to get the the evidence of tongues in her life. I needed to fall, and immediately the hour she called me, she said, I don't know what happened on the school bus today. I was driving, but I started speaking in tongues. I was like, Come on, Holy Ghost, because I know you hear me. Um, and I said, Okay, cool. Then um, it was the holidays, because holidays will test everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I spent Thanksgiving with her. All my, I was living in D.C. All my family was here. Spent Thanksgiving with her. I already told her, I'm going home for Christmas. If I spent Thanksgiving with you, I'm going home for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Her birthday was Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mind you, I said, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. um, so, in her good conscience, she thought I was going to change my mind. And she had her good friends. Listen, I'm going to say this about me. Listen, I'm a whole person. If you got any issues, talk to me. I don't do outside conversations. Mm -hmm. I don't even get my own family involved in my relationship because family will change the dynamic of your relationship. Um, and so, again, 
when I left to go to Texas, she had a whole problem. Not to Texas, Lord Jesus. Texas must be in my brain. Um, come home, she had a whole problem. So when she now approaches me, she got an issue. Mm. So what I do best is, okay, cool. She had a little girl. I had a son. When I'm going to meet your baby daddy? Mm. Because that's our vitals when you deal with somebody that has kids. Because right. um, I need to know what you like. And he needs to know what I'm like. Just in case he want to pop off, I need to let him know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, and he needs to know that if I'm a predator, I'm connected to your child. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, again, I never met him until February 14th on Valentine's Day. And I'm at her house cooking steak, shrimp, salad, all this stuff. And he happened to pop in. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know I was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. So it was my mm -hmm. duty to introduce myself mm -hmm. and let the Holy Ghost use me. Mm -hmm. um, and he got up out of the house because I knew you came for a specific task. Mm -hmm. And so, are you still having sex with this partner? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we just cool. We just cool. We just cool. You got to know with the, the whole, like, right. Valentine's Day is a significant day. Uh -huh. um, she was, she was yeah, right. And so you, you had already prepared for that. And we got we to gotta pay attention to sign because, mm -hmm. like, that January... We know everybody get income taxes. Mm -hmm. She took 600 and some dollars and went to go buy uh, clothes, all of this for the kids and stuff. But you ain't pay your rent. You ain't pay, put groceries in your house. Like certain mm -hmm. things, that, that's a sign. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to manage your money. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So again, I'm not that deep that I don't see this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then phone get cut off. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to help you this time. Mm -hmm. Pay it. Next month, your phone get cut off. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I'm going to help you, mm -mm. but just know this is the last time because we ain't married. Mm -hmm. Third money got cut off. Oh, well, you're going to have to work this out. You're going to have to get two cans and a straight. Right. <laughs> work that out because you're not a good steward over your finance. And she did hair, and I worked for Panera Bread. I was the GM. She never visited where I stayed. She never came to see if I had a job. Um, she just went by what I said. And a lot of times in relationship, we go by what folks say right. instead of actually doing our homework. Right. Let me pop over. And that, that, that brings up something that was discussed before. These cameras were rolling. Background checks. Yes. <laughs> People, to, again, simple stuff. Again, I never stop praying to God. If this ain't the person that's supposed to be in my life, you need to fix whatever the situation is. Hmm. So she had a best friend. You got to be careful with best friends. Again, he, I was like, I asked her, are y'all sleeping together? No, we're not sleeping together. Okay, I'm going to take your word until mm -hmm. proven differently. Mm -hmm. He takes me to his church. I want you to come visit. Cool. The Holy Ghost hits me in church. Mm -hmm. And I write down everything the Lord is revealing to me. And I let him read it. Mm -hmm. The preacher preached verbatim what I wrote down on the paper. Mm -hmm. So he got scared. Mm -hmm. And told her, I think you need to tell Derek. Mm -hmm. She called me the next day. She said, something we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, cool. I said, we got an open relationship. We can talk about anything. I said, just don't tell me you slept with him. Now, mind <laughs> you, I don't know why she called him. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, why you say that? I said, oh, no reason. What you calling me about? She said, well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did sleep together, but it was a long time ago. I said, I already knew y'all slept together. I was waiting on you. I said, because he's still so tied to you. Mm. Mm. And I, he's still in love with you. Mm. So I now got to compete with your baby daddy and the best friend. Mm -hmm. um, and then here's another dynamic of relationships. She had a mama that was dis on disabled say, oh, she got to come live with us when we get married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, why can't she go to work? Because I'm that person. Why, why, why she can't work? Uh, she she still can do some stuff. However, I said, cool, we got kids. Work from home. She can stay at home, watch the kids, but we need to have those, those moments. Okay, cool. Then it was, oh, brother in jail, he about to get out of jail. He going to need somewhere to stay. I'm not that dude. I don't take my own family in. I'm definitely not about to take yours in. Um, right. And so, again, that's another sign. Right. And so, again, then it was, I don't like the way you dress. I don't like the way you cook. I don't like... It's a whole I don't like in the wow. situation. 
Um, and I said, and then she was like, my my son is not my biological, he's my adopted son. Oh, he needs to go back to his daddy. Oh. Um, and I said, well, I got a question for you. Yeah, glory. I said, you got a daughter, right? Yeah. I said, what would I be in her life? Well, you know, me and her father will have said, I said, let me stop you. As long as I'm paying bills, That's putting right. clothes on her back, on. putting shoes on her feet, I got every right. Mm. And I dare anybody to tell me anything different. Mm. And I said, so I'm going to help you out this very moment. It was two weeks before I went. I said, this is going to be our last conversation. Mm. Mm. Wow. And I'm, it's till to this day, 2007, I still ain't talked to her. So it comes to that point about healing. I mm. buried myself in work mm. and didn't deal with the situation. Mm. I buried, I went to work and just holding up. And I was telling my boss, I'm tired. And she said, um, you complaining too much. Mm. You need to go on a fast. Okay, cool. <laughs> it was the week before my birthday in September. I was at work, working all day long, and I said, oh, I ain't ate today. Let me go get some wings from Domino's. It's right across. I walked into Domino's and immediately could not breathe. Mm -hmm. And I said, am I having an asthma attack? I ain't had one of these. Let me get in the freezer because I can cool this down. But it wasn't stopping. I started having chest pains. Got um, Eventually, I left to go home, and I was like, I still can't breathe. Went to the hospital. They put the EKG machine on me. They, they was like the SWAT team. They said, we're admitting you into the hospital. You about to have a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in AFib. And so, again, all of a sudden, all those emotions mm. came up. Mm -hmm. It's because of this girl that you put in my life, Jesus. It's because of the church folk. Mm -hmm. It's because of this. I started going through all of this. And then the Lord spoke to me. He said, but what you going to do after this? Mm. <laughs> what you mean what I'm going to do after this? It's because of your church people. It's because of this. <laughs> and immediately he said, you can be frustrated. You can go through this situation. But still, what you going to do after this? And immediately some, a preacher called me. He was like, I'm sick of the church, folks. I'm sick of this and this. I said, so what you going to do after this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, God, you funny. Like, now I got to speak a situation word, you just right. spoke to me. Um, and so, but again, when you don't get healed, you bring all that stuff into relationships, you make everybody pay for some <laughs> stupid person that was before mm -hmm. and what you allowed to happen. Right. Because it ain't all the other person. It's some right. stuff you allowed right. to happen. Right. Right. And so you got to deal with all of that. What part did you play? Mm -hmm. And are you going to play this same part in your next relationship? Because mm -hmm. we say we heal mm -hmm. until something trigger you and remind you mm -hmm. of the very right. thing sure you just will. got up and you'd be like, oh, I thought I was healed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, you knew you wouldn't heal when you got in this. That's right. Because if you ain't wait almost a year before you got into another relationship and you just jumped into another one, you wasn't healed. I can tell you you wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. As much as you say I was in love, listen, when you're in love, it just don't die overnight. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sure don't. Mm. For some reason, uh, I, and I think everybody is in agreement with this, this conversation has come full circle. We're starting to talk about the very same things that uh, introduced uh, this particular segment. We're going to talk about something a little bit different when we return right here on A Soft Place to Fall. Okay. A soft place, a soft place to fall. Are you covered, protected, and prepared? Don't you want to ease your mind by having the confidence that when the time comes, you and your loved ones are protected and insured? It's as easy as picking up the phone and calling licensed life agent Enidra Wells, 225-936-6017. With care and compassion, Enidra will walk you through the entire process of having you and your loved ones covered protected, and prepared. No exams, most pre-existing diagnoses are covered, no special requirements. So call today, 225-936-6017, and have the assurance of insurance.
Here it is, one of my most favorite features here at A Soft Place of Fall. I get a chance to tell on people. <laughs> get a chance to tell God about some of the wonderful vessels that he has placed in our lives. In our recent trip to Atlanta, Georgia, we had a fantastic time. Everyone was so accommodating and so hospitable and just wonderful. But we ran up on two individuals who were at our beck and call. Everything that was needed was provided as we weaved our way through uncharted territories in Atlanta, Georgia. They were just a phone call away. And for that, I'm going to tell God on Arnold Gilbert and William Richard, two very powerful, dynamic men of God. Keep doing what you're doing. God sees and he knows. If you have someone you'd like for me to tattle on, simply send me their information via email a soft place to fall at yahoo.com and I'll be sure and tell God on them for you. Congratulations, you found it. A soft place to fall right here. Are you enjoying what you're experiencing? The magnificent guests, the beautiful setting, all of this just with you in mind. We need your help. Why don't you consider sowing into the very fertile grounds at a soft place to fall? You can simply do it using the Cash App, dollar sign, model voice. If you want to continue seeing all of this beautiful exhibitions that we're presenting to you, helping you find your soft place to fall, we encourage you to support us. Now back to a soft place to fall. We're back here having raw talk at a soft place to fall. Okay, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. I'm single, but I got a good job. I'm, I'm, I'm wonderful. I can uh, enjoy life. What do you say to these people who uh, feel that uh, the opposite of no man is an island? Everybody, they'll, they'll, they'll have things to say. Everybody, marriage is not for everybody, which we know mm -hmm. to be true, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, relationships, not necessarily, and a uh, young lady mentioned about platonic relationships. So uh, the single person. Uh, that can go mm -hmm. into many dynamics of that. Again, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a single person, mm -hmm. but Again, it's what defines you that's all around you. Because um, in this life, nobody can't make it by themselves. Mm -hmm. When you came into this world, you was pushed through somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so you wasn't by Come yourself. Um, and so I don't care how much somebody says, as long as I got Jesus, I'm cool. I'm that comes from a bitter place. Yes. And when you are bitter, you say these stuff yes. um, because you're not healed. Yes. Um, and so uh, yeah, and, yep. and and you don't. And so because I don't want to get hurt anymore, I, I eliminate all the situation. Yep. Um, and so I dive myself in different things and different outlets. If you can't match me financially, then we can't even holler. Um, <laughs> if you if you if we, listen. All of us keep people in compartments. That's right. When we meet a person, we already put them in a compartment of where they're going to be. Uh -huh. uh, if they're going to be an associate, yeah. they're going to be just a side piece, whether they're going to be, uh, mm -hmm. you going to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. we, we, we pick those compartments yes, to put you in. Yeah, um, and so, again, if I know you in one compartment, you can't get out that you compartment. Um, so if, I, if you're just going to be a friend, guess what? I don't care how much you sweet and all this mm -hmm. stuff, you're going to be a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that's just all it's going to be. So, again, go back to that because church folks say that a lot. Oh, yes. As long as yes. I got King Jesus. Listen, even Jesus had the disciples. Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, let me just jump in there uh, before I forget because I'm kind of old sometimes. Uh, you mentioned the word bitterness. Mm -hmm. The so everybody that's single and says that uh, I don't want to be in a relationship, I don't need to be in a relationship, is everybody bitter? To a certain degree, a certain yes. Degree. Because again, that goes back right. to what um, Dorcas said earlier about nature and nurture. Yeah. So yeah. again, our ability when we come into this world is we are engrafted in love. Mm -hmm. And so if love is in you, it's going to gravitate, it's going to pull people. 
So again, for me to shut love off is a spirit of bitterness mm -hmm. um, because that means I'm rejecting. And once I reject, I, now I got to understand where bitterness is coming from because it might be hatred. And hatred brings on the spirit of bitterness and unforgiveness and retaliation and anger and all. So it goes into a whole lot of other categories because the very part of me was I had an anger issue. Mm -hmm. And anger came from being rejected since I came out the womb. Um, and so rejection after rejection after rejection after rejection, it does something to your psyche. Mm -hmm. That's right. So once it does something to your psyche, you start handling people in a certain way. You coming in my, no, I don't need you in my space. I walk in my house all by myself. I, yeah, I can open the door for myself. You, it's a whole attitude problem. And people just, they can say, um, it's blue outside. What you mean it's blue? It's great when I, the, 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 like they go left. We see this all the time. We see it all the time. And I work in healthcare. So I see mental disturbed people and those that call themselves mental when they really not mental, they just hypochondriacs. Because they want attention. Um, and so when you got an attention seeker, because that's the opposite of those that just uh, reject people. Right. You got the attention seeker ones. Mm -hmm. um, that's all they do. You you in a group of folks, they got to be seen. Mm -hmm. Hey, what you doing? They loud. They, they, mm -hmm. they do too much. Mm -hmm. um, we all got one of them people yeah. that we can identify. Be like, listen. We're going to this place, and you got to give instructions. Yeah. You got to break them down. Uh, we don't act like this. We don't do this. We don't just listen. Uh, we, we, we go through these. They need disclosures. That's right. They need disclosures. Uh, and so, again, when people see something that gets they're intrigued with, they go full throttle. Mm. Full throttle at all costs. And so I have to be careful because, again, the right cologne can attract somebody. Mm -hmm. The right perfume, the way you fit your clothes, the way you, you your eyes, the way you speak, the mm -hmm. way you catch me in the morning time, my voice is at a at an all-time low. Yes, um, it is that raspy, <laughs> low voice that will catch you good and right, and you'll be like, listen, who am I talking to? So, again... It's we, just you in the morning. Uh, it's me all day long. Uh, uh, so again, we all have our thing. That very thing that makes you, we all have it. And when you really intrigued by somebody, your pheromones change. That's right. Mm. Mm. I have a question. So to his to Kerwin, Kerwin yes, yes. to your question, you said that if a person is single, does it mean that they're bitter? Uh, I would like to ask, why couldn't it be? Um, that they are using that as uh, protection. protection. Like for me, to your point, like rejection, this, that, and the other. And so basically, I am protecting my heart from all of that. And so it's not that I'm trying to be single and, you know, whatever. I, well, once, you know, once I found Jesus in the fullness thereof, um, I realized I can't be single, but I was okay <laughs> being single. You know what I'm saying? But that was my, it was my protection for myself. So uh, to you, you said something earlier, I'm going to get you before you get me. I'm going to push you away. I'm going to say no. I'm going to reject you before you reject me. But it's not necessarily that I'm being bitter. It's just I'm trying, I'm trying to protect my own heart and my own. So, but I, I don't necessarily call myself bitter. So, so again, could, why don't you speak with, to that? With, with that place of rejection, you may not be operating in bitterness. However, if you reject me, you now put something on me. Mm. I'm sorry. Come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so again, if because again, if I'm rejecting somebody and they may be in a circumstance or a situation, I now cause them to have low self-esteem because right. I rejected them. Because it was something in me that right. that drew me towards you and nah and de and depending oh. on how I respond, how you respond. Uh, yeah, how you respond. I don't I don't damage somebody That's because true. we do this to church folks mm -hmm. or folks that are coming into the church. You don't look what you got <laughs> and, we, and, we, and we, have a, we have a disposition on somebody yep. and now we Woo, because again Lord. we never know how we may treat somebody because we may do something unaware yep. uh, right. because or that aware. mechanism right. that we put up of uh, protection. Mm -hmm. And, and what, what listen 
I just said, hey, you, what, why you got this whole shield up? Right, and right. so I perceive it different because we all got this perception stuff. Right. And, and where yeah. we are mentally, mm -hmm. we can That's perceive right. stuff the wrong way. And then all of a sudden, I'm popping off at you. And then now we done got into a whole combat because of your protection right. and rejection. Exactly. <laughs> I just don't believe you. <laughs> I feel you can be content. Right. That's a, you don't yeah. have to necessarily be bitter, but you can be content being single. Yes. And you probably want to be in a relationship, but you can, I believe you can be content being single. Well, can I ask a question? Because romantic relationship or <laughs> just relationship, <laughs> period? So because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, being a human being requires connections. See, so now, time. if okay, so right, so if you don't, you it. might not, you might not be in a romantic relationship. <laughs> right. But at the end of the day, being a human being requires connection because okay. if you don't, then you end up being one of them people that we see on the news that get on top of roofs and shoot everybody. Okay. It's just because <laughs> honestly, honestly, the, the benefit of having human beings in your life is for you to gain perspective. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not whether or not whether or not that person is a seasonal friend or just somebody who come up and, and like me I'm very notorious for I'm be could be anywhere and I'll just strike a conversation. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I'm notorious yeah. for that because yeah. I feel like sometimes in striking up a conversation that first of all says someone sees you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when someone sees you then that means someone has taken the time out of their lives to make you valuable. So that's the part, I mean, I can understand when we say, you know, you get to a certain point, because I have friends who are older than me, mm -hmm. And they're basically like, yeah, I'm done with the whole, you know, romantic relationship. Gotta, but but they have a whole, but that. they do have a lot of other relationships and people who are connected. Right. I can't say that enough. Mm -hmm. People are important. You gotta have people. I got a question. Okay, so you saying that from a, a very uh, platonic, but so say for it's somebody, and they ain't pointing no elbows or pointing no fingers, but you might have, you might have like a high sex drive, right? And so how are you oh, going Lord. to justify living for God? And saying you content, knowing all along that you're you want an orgasm. You're, you're not, so you're, you're not. not I don't. I mean, so talk you're to not. me because this so, is not content. But that's lies. Lies. They tell. That's lies. You're not going to. So, so, lie. 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 so, you not so lie. Lie. again, <laughs> let me speak to this lust. Lust. Yeah. Yeah. Lust. Because again, y'all know me. Lust, because because again, a lot of people say I have a high sex drive. Uh -huh. I'm in the medical mm -hmm. field. We never tell anybody you got a high sex drive right. because it's not medical. Right. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Because it's testosterone, estrogen. Mm -hmm. When your hormones become unbalanced, again, lust is a powerful yes, weapon to where it makes people say, I got a high mm -hmm. sex drive mm -hmm. because I'm trying to fulfill a need. So if my flesh is in control, mm -hmm. guess what I'm going after? My flesh. My flesh. Mm -hmm. And so because my flesh ain't submitted, um, I'm going to do what I'm going to do to handle me. Um, and so whether I'm single or whether I, I got a cool breeze coming through, um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I'm going to have to do so that I am made whole. So again, those that are single have, do a lot of masturbation, use a lot of toys uh, to satisfy their need. And so if you get with somebody, they really don't satisfy the urge that's in you. They just enhance it because you don't really want them because they're not connected to you. Mm. Because the one that is connected and designed for you enhances every being in your body that when they touch you or speak to you, your body responds because you are connected to them. You don't have to say, let me take this off for you because they will undress you in every aspect and you don't have to think about another person hitting every essence of who you are. Mm -hmm. That's fair. <laughs> I just have a minute. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. All that's that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Carry on. <laughs> I'm good. Thanks for playing. <laughs> So again, this is why it's important that your house is clean That's before right. you invite somebody to be part of your house. They're gonna pull me on Oprah and stuff and be like, listen, we need you to talk. To right. me. <laughs> Absolutely. But well, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this particular session of A Soft Place to Fall 
it has been, um, we'll just say to be continued. How about that? Yes. <laughs> what an honorable opportunity to sit and chat with these beautiful people and talk about something that is very important. Mm -hmm. And I hope that uh, everybody got a little bit of something out of it. If you didn't, go back, rewind it, watch it again. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Yeah, but different revelation. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Apostle Derek Zachary, Thank and you, sir. wonderful guests. And um, in the meantime, as I always encourage you, keep pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Thank to God. Don't worry about how many mountains you successfully climb, how many goals you successfully achieve, how many initials you have earned at the back of your name or added there for your convenience. Mm. Only what you do, oh. mm. only what you do for Christ that. will last. Amen. Find yourself a place to fall. Amen. Like, comment, and subscribe to what? A Soft Place to Fall with Kerwin Feeling YouTube channel. See you soon. A soft place, a soft place to fall. A soft place, a soft place to fall.